everyone. Today is the 19th of November. We're at the Minier beach. I'm doing a selfie to show you how polluted it is. Take a look. I'll do a panorama. Hi, Fatimata. Sorry for interrupting. How are you? I'm good. What are you doing? I'm doing a selfie. It's a way of showing people what it's like, making them think about it, pushing them to take action. And what's going on behind us? There's a group of young people who are getting together to clean the beach. Let's go and talk to them. Yes. Hi, everyone. What are you doing here today? We're here to clean up our beach. This trash comes from local neighborhoods because there's no collection by garbage trucks. Why do these volunteers have to clean the beach? There's been no real concerted plan at the national level to deal with Guinea's trash problem. It's our role as young people to do what we can. Citizens can also do their bit for their community. Fatumata and her fellow activists know they can only clean a small part of the beach. But the point is to try and to be seen trying to inspire locals like Rosaline to take matters into their own hands, to allow them to dream of a better, cleaner future for their kids. Today, a local businessman has lent the volunteers a spanking new garbage truck imported from Switzerland. In Conakry's better neighborhoods, the 30% of households with running water and sanitation, garbage trucks make the rounds door to door. But that's not the case for the other 70% of the population who live in Conakry's poorer districts. How does it work in a neighborhood like Boubine? The inhabitants have to deal with their own trash. They can pay a local kid to come along each day and collect the garbage with a handcart. Ibrahim is one of the carters. He makes the rounds, charging anything from 1,000 francs to 20,000, depending on the quantity. Garbage trucks never come here. We sweep and pile up the trash. Then the carters come and collect it. Do the local authorities do anything to help? No, nothing. They're not interested. Ibrahim makes three or four rounds a day. It's dirty work, but it earns him a living. Back at the pickup point, there's a city employee in an orange vest who's supposed to be in charge. But the real boss is a man named Mohammed in the blue shirt, who takes a 10% cut from the dozens of carters who come and go. But Ibrahim still makes 20 to 40 euros a day, more than 10 times the minimum wage, and enough for him to save to go back to business school. Much of what Ibrahim picks up are plastic sachets of water that are widely available in Guinea. They're a cheap way of providing clean drinking water, but once thrown away, can kill fish and further complicate Conakry's massive trash problem. The city of two million people generates 74 tons of plastic waste every day, and most of that goes to the same place. Hello, Lamine. Hi, Derek. Tell me what's under our feet right now. We're walking on a mountain of garbage. Concasseur is Conakry's main dump, a former quarry. It's been filled up for decades and is now as much as 30 meters high. During the summer rains, part of it collapsed, killing nine people. What's the people around us doing? These young people you see are here to collect what they can sell, anything of value. They're working in horrible conditions. Look, there's even a syringe. They're barefoot, they don't wear gloves or any sort of protection, and no mask. They're exposed to all kinds of health hazards. As an environmental engineer, what do you see around us? I don't see the abject misery that most people see. I see the potential, what we can do with the raw materials, an opportunity. An opportunity? Absolutely. Trash is often a nuisance, but it can also be a resource. Around a thousand people work full or part-time at the dump. While some live there, others like Ibrahim come to earn extra pay. He's a student who needs bus money to get to his accounting classes. His family don't know he's here. 
What are you doing? I'm collecting blue plastic and white. They don't accept black or other colors. We also collect aluminium cans. Ibrahim collects two or three loads a day and sells them to local women. He earns about five euros a day. The women take the bags home, wash them, and then bring them to a depot at the bottom of the mountain. Their bags are weighed and paid for, then sorted and packed into bales weighing a quarter of a ton. Like elsewhere in the world, recycling in Guinea can be profitable. Sudiaplast is a recycling business that has 120 full-time employees and provides a living for 200 people at the dump and hundreds more at collection sites around the city. What's the first step toward a cleaner guinea? Every household needs a trash can. And here they are. Your company's been active for five years and provides an income for about 800, maybe 1,000 people. You're thinking of expanding? Yes, we're only in the capital for now, but we want to start operating across the country so we can collect more plastic. We're going to need a lot of financing. So you've created jobs, you've helped clean the city. Has the government given you any assistance? Not for the moment, no. Not at all. We're on our own. For Lamine, private businesses like Sodiaplast are a key part of any long-term solution. But just one part, the government, he believes, should organize and regulate the sector and find a way to get citizens involved too. People obviously like cleanliness, but they don't know where to start. If you put in place the right framework, the right policies, with the proper coordination, that lets people know that it is possible to have clean streets. The central government is responsible for trash in Conakry. But outside the capital, Guinea's towns and villages are left to their own devices. We take a three-hour drive to Kindia, Guinea's fourth biggest city, to meet a fan of Fatumata's selfie campaign. Hello, welcome to Kindia, Usene. Thank you very much. Fatumata told me that Kindia has an original approach to dealing with trash. Yes, Kindia is a real trailblazer. <laughs> we experiment. Abderrahman works for Kindia's mayor, who's made cleaning up the city his biggest priority. The last weekend of every month is cleanup day. I saw these ladies here at seven in the morning. They love to clean. Has anyone told them that France 24 would be here today? No, they didn't know. No one made any calls. The city's police force has been mobilized too. The force's 19 agents are on full-time trash duty. If we catch someone littering, they get a fine. 40 to 100,000 francs. If we catch them twice or three times, they go to jail for a few days to change their mentality. It's all the work of this man. Elected two years ago, Mayor Ba is clear about his mission. I'm the mayor and I'm also Mr. Clean. I make a lot of noise about it because it's a way to teach people. When people have lost the instinct for cleanliness, leaders have to stand up and motivate them. We've seen people with brooms everywhere we've been. Women, police officers. It almost feels like a publicity stunt. Yes, of course it is. It's a form of political communication. I speak up to raise awareness, to inform the population and motivate them to clean up the city. What's this behind us? It's our one and only garbage truck. There's only one garbage truck for the whole city. Yes, only one for 270,000 people. How are you going to clean the city with only one truck? I motivate my employees. Of course, logistics are important, but the key ingredient is willpower. Willpower and example, but is that enough without resources, without funding and organization on a national scale? Back in Conakry, we have an appointment with Monsieur Kamara. 
He's head of a newly created national agency charged with developing a comprehensive strategy for Guinea's waste problem. We decided to get all parties involved, the private sector, the state, professionals and citizen activists. His staff showed him Fatimata's selfies and he showed up in person to help her clean a beach. Fatimata admits things have improved since the beginning of the year and says Monsieur Kamara's plan has some good ideas. I think it's a good plan that contains the right elements. If it is implemented, it'll be good for the people of Guinea. But it's a big if. Monsieur Kamara has to sell his plan to the ministers and it's far from sure they'll give him the resources he needs, even if they have them. Three days after the cleanup, Fatimata goes back to the beach for an inspection. It's not bad. And there's an encouraging sign. I'm very pleased to see that the local kids pitched in. They put tires out to mark off the area. And she has a message for the young people locally and her activist friends online. Guys, the National Sanitation Agency has promised to put into action a plan to restore our capital's image before January 2019. So, the clock is ticking. Let's keep them honest, so we can make Conakry the pearl of Africa once more. <laughs>